We're firmly into winter and my tree is freshly decorated. Look at her. She's obnoxiously cheery and I love her for it. December always seems to go so quickly, but at least I caught this much of it. Much to Sumi's chagrin, we have a very special house guest this week. My parents' dog Sammy is here. She's a very good girl, though she does have some separation anxiety, which makes me fret for my neighbors. She may also be one of Sumi's biggest fans, which is saying a lot. In addition to Sammy sitting, I'm working on an environment-dense illustration that takes place in an imaginary diner. You may even recognize it from a previous vlog, but I got stuck on its execution at the time. This time, I gave it a line work treatment, which I started over in Procreate. It was really important to me to take my time with this one and experiment to get it just right. Procreate is my fave for line art. The interface feels a lot more natural to me, and it's easier to get lost in the flow. And this is a good thing. But here it is in Photoshop because I ran out of layers in Procreate. I also just prefer to color it in Photoshop because picking a palette feels a bit more precise than in Procreate. For whatever reason, it's easier for me to pick colors in a more nuanced way in Photoshop, incrementally adjusting the saturation and hue as I need to. For lunch, I'm heating up a bao that my mom brought me when she dropped off Sammy. In a brief interlude, let's head to Ikea with a friend. We both still have a bit of Christmas shopping to do, but we may as well enjoy the fine dining experience, no? And who can resist a sunset in Red Hook? Back at home, I'm finishing up a little more work on the diner piece before my walk with Sammy. One more thing to prepare for some work tomorrow. I'm putting together a little mood board for a new client piece. More on that tomorrow. You're watching live footage of my two remaining brain cells. Well, as it turns out, I am sick. I started to feel a minor sore throat yesterday, but today I have a full-blown runny nose. I've tested for COVID, but it would seem that this is just a cold. Just as well because I just got my new health insurance card in the mail. Yes, these are exciting times. One recent victory of mine is that I managed to call the New York State of Health Marketplace and a kind person at the call center helped me reduce my healthcare bill to something that's hundreds of dollars less per month than it was throughout 2023. I feel so happy and relieved. One less thing to worry about each month. To bolster my ailing immune system, I've been slow cooking bone broth since last night and made some joke with it this morning. It's got lots of garlic and ginger in it, and scallions and spinach and some turkey bacon. But to top it off, some momofuku garlic chili oil. Anyway, I'm sick enough that I probably shouldn't see any other people this week, but well enough to work. Does that make me a sicko? Probably. So let's work on these client sketches. This assignment celebrates Lunar New Year, which happens to be the Year of the Dragon. It holds a special significance to me since both my mom and I are dragons. This year I'll turn the same age as she was when she had me. Such a surreal thought. Okay, I know these don't quite look like sketches right now, but this just happens to be the way I work. I like to start with something very loose, get a feel for the flow and composition, then tighten it up into something the client can understand. And please disregard my hair wrap. I may as well do a little hair mask if I'm going to be cooped up inside for most of the day. Adding a few touches to the diner illustration. I'm not sure if I want to do some straight up shading and highlights like I normally do, or see how things look flat. 
For now, I think I like it on the characters to make them pop forth a bit, but the flat look of Vaporwave and 90s anime art does appeal to me. This piece is inspired by a few different references. They include In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai, especially when it comes to the figure's clothing and the diner scene. Maybe even Twin Peaks, though I didn't manage to finish the series, Little Nemo in terms of some of the surrealism, and maybe even some Cardcaptor Sakura with regard to its celestial elements and thin lines. Sammy's slightly worried, slightly knowing expression means that it's time for us to go outside. I do think the cold outdoor air has been doing me some good, though I still have a runny nose beneath the mask I wear outside. Since Sumi cannot go with us, she'll be catching up on some bird TV. With much excitement, I recently learned that I've been accepted into the short box comics fair this year. I'm going to work on a few photo studies for the comic I'd like to make. If you're unfamiliar with it, Shortbox is an indie comics fair run by Zeneb Akhtar, during which various comic authors have several months to create a brand new comic. The general public can purchase these comics for the span of a month and download them straight to their device. Back in the day, Shortbox used to have more of a subscription-based model, but as you can imagine, mailing comics and promoting them is a lot for just one person to manage by themselves. In 2019, I made my own 44-page comic as a submission to one of the boxes. At the time, not only did I have a full-time job, but I was also freelancing for multiple clients after hours. Because of poor time management on my part, I ended up having to make the comic in two months. I did the best I could, but I can't say that I was proud of what I made. Then again, I can probably say this about most of the pieces I made while I was extremely burnt out. This year, I have a little more experience as well as time on my side. I'm going to do my utmost to make it an enjoyable process for myself, and hopefully that ultimately transmits to readers. So what's the comic going to be about, anyway? Here's my elevator pitch. <clears throat> Eddie, a superstitious fisherman, can't fish, can't pay his bills, and can't even give the sweater he knit to his crush. But all that is about to change when a mer-creature named Locke washes up on his shore. Natural enemies, can they overcome their mutual distrust to rescue the ones they love from an oncoming natural disaster? I'm in the midst of writing a script, so subject to change. I've been thinking about my comic a lot. It's all I think about when I hit the bed at night and in the last moments before I sleep. But I think maybe that's what it's like in the conception stage, at least for me. It's all I want to work on, even with client work to do and personal work waiting in the wings. We'll see once the script needs to be translated visually. I think I first came up with this idea in an old sketchbook of mine where I drew a large man and a tiny seal slash mer creature. It had the upper body of a seal pup and the lower half of a scaly fish. It's snack time with two stinky girls. Eh, who am I kidding? Three stinky girls. Let's make this a proper movie night. For that, we'll definitely need some homemade popcorn.
Tonight, we're watching a very contentious film for my animal companions. It may be Sammy's last day here, but she is ready to lock in her steps. We just have to make sure that we get back in time to try on some matching holiday sweaters. Wow, I had such bad cute aggression this day. Not long after that, my mom picked Sammy up and Simi went back to being an only child. I'm packaging up all of my client sketches into one PDF, replete with descriptions, but it won't be a long while until I receive feedback on these. Ah, something that arrived in the mail recently is this X-File zine I was a contributor to called The Truth Is Out There. It was organized by a talented artist named Catherine Lamb, and their pieces were so damn gorgeous. As an adult, I am a huge horror fan, but I don't think anything will live up to the thrill of being scared by watching X-Files with my dad as a kid. For that reason, it will always have a special place in my heart. Also, hello, Agent Dana Scully. I never quite filmed Friday since I felt a little too worn out from being sick. That's what happens when you catch a nasty cold the one week you set aside to film. But I did chaotically splice together some fragments of the rest of my 2023 here. Beyond Christmas gifts, my friend and I managed to snag a gingerbread kit from Ikea. Look at this prime real estate. You're never gonna find a better offer in this market. Four windows, high ceilings. Just look at all that natural light. On Christmas Eve, a few friends and I drove into Manhattan to see the tree. You know, the big one at Rockefeller Center. Admittedly, this is something I haven't done since I was in high school. I just don't dig crowds. But it was fun seeing it with some of my besties. Once the new year rolled around, I trekked it over to spend time with my parents. My dad and I made a lasagna together, then digested it by going on a wintry walk with Sammy. She loves these reeds that grow by the water. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, she's really into them. Anyway, I hope 2024 is treating you well so far. To pop things off this year, I started using a Hobonichi Techo planner which I bought before I realized that it's its own little phenom. I know, I must have been living under a rock. So far, I've been using it to do a little sketching and scrapbooking each day, but I'll share updates featuring it next time. One more exciting thing to start the new year, I visited the Met Opera House and saw my first opera. 
As far as I'm concerned, I thought Carmen was a great first show. Though my favorite part may have been all the people watching during intermission. Well, that's a wrap for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll let Sumi see you off.